wanted people to take how take it deep in their heart how important it is to be connected with Mother Earth. And, and so that's when Spirit said, do the creative. That will take you deeper. And that's why it's shown in the chapter, the beginning of mental, going into the creator. It takes it deeper within. The second half is about community cooperation. So then I was very fortunate. Um, did you, who saw the movie Aaron Brockovich? Did you guys see that movie? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was so fortunate by the law firm um, uh, that Aaron worked at. Um, they've edited the uh, workbook for me. And I still have to pick it up. But I'm very fortunate with that. Also, another young lady is helping to edit it again. So that's it's still being edited. So I've been really fortunate with that. And it's not about me, but it's about, I'm just so grateful that um, it's able to get out and help people, you know? So there's these. And uh, then I met my wonderful husband. It's been a couple years now. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <coughs> it's like, it's, oh, I have to tell you. I was born an identical twin, and my identical twin sister is Kaylee, and I'm Kimmy Lynn. And she passed away with spinal angitis at two and a half years old. But that's okay, because uh, things happen for a reason. Well, all those many years of all the things I needed to do to clear out karma, work, whatever, I knew the second half of my life would be very good, thank God. I knew the first half of my life was over when I wrote the first book, because I've heard so many inner voices talking. Little little proverbs were coming out all the time. I hear this stuff talking, talking, talking. As soon as I finished, wrote this book, it went silent inside me. It all stopped, and I knew inside that was the first half of my life over, and the second half was going to be so much better. And that's where John comes in. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> so John and I work together. We are together 24/7. He's almost like the twin sister that I let go of. He's in place in a male figure. We are a lot alike. Well, of course, everybody has to work out the differences, right? But it's, it's, it gets smoother and smoother and smoother. But we, it just flows. And so we're, we work together, play everything. So, <laughs> um, and so uh, John has the children's publishing company called uh, Illumination Arts, and he'll share about that, and also Children's Foundation. We did a big overhaul, a lot of changes, a lot of reorganization. And uh, it's just opened up in a whole new way, and we're excited because it's 2012. I'm going to come around and do Accutonics tuning fork to everybody, and it's going to kind of like center while John does his intro, and so we can move forward with everything. Hey kids, I'm John. Hi, John. <laughs> I have a very eclectic background, born in Chehalis. I grew up in a little town called Longview, and. I was originally going to be a high school or a grade school teacher um, until I was, uh, after my first year of college, I was playing golf in the uh, in Longview Country Club and I had a great second shot on the 14th hole. <laughs> and it landed right on the, uh, about 10 feet from a man who was up by the green and uh, I went up and uh, he was waiting for me. I thought, well, he's going to be irritated with me because I came that close to him. And he said, son, after watching that shot, I think I'd rather play with you than in front of you. Mm -hmm. I thought that was cool. He had a sense of humor. He had a good electric golf cart, and I put my clubs in his cart and played four holes with him, and it turned out he was an accountant. Well, I had no idea what an accountant did, but I was kind of impressed by his sense of humor in his golf cart, and four days later I said, I think I'll be an accountant too. <laughs> so I ended up getting a five-year degree. I was a Master of Science in Accounting at Washington State and Arizona State. Um, Started a career as a young, public, uh, young CPA in Bellevue. Actually, started in Seattle with one of the national accounting firms. Um, my career was derailed completely by, in 1976, my first trip to India. Mm. My first of 17 trips. Yeah. And there I met a man who had mastered uh, the use of universal energy completely. Mm -hmm. He was completely at his will. Uh, and his name was Sai Baba, Satya Sai Baba. Mm -hmm. well, how many of you heard of, have heard of him? How many have not heard of him? Or I, no, I mean, I have. I've heard yeah, a little bit. Well, basically, him. Sai Baba was a little man. He, he left uh, the planet a year ago, Easter day. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he stood five foot tall with an Afro hairdo. And whatever he wanted to create physically, he would twirl his hand and materialize it. He could blow on something and totally change the composition. I saw this kind of thing many times. He would leave his body all the time and go out of town and save people's lives. And they would come back and report that he had showed up and pulled them out of some disaster. We could talk the whole hour, many hours about him, because, I, like I said, I've been there 17 different trips. 
but he started uh, my attention on things, seeing energy differently. And that's why we're here today is talking about energy, and I'm going to sw swiftly get into this. Uh, with discussing universal energy, there's a thing called prana, it's called chi in some, or ki, uh, but it's basically the energy of the universe that cannot be measured, um, and it's how miracles happen. It's the basis of energy. In the Western world, the scientists, uh, all of the basic science of this came from either Austria or Germany. In Germany, there was a man named Anton Mesmer, who 300 years ago, experimented with a wooden uh, barrel filled with metal shavings, and he used that in his medical practice to enhance the healing. About 100 years after that, a man named von Reckenberg, Carl von Reckenberg, did much the same thing, except he expanded the concept. And finally, from my perspective, the <clears throat> one of the most, or possibly the most important scientists of the last 100 years at least, is Dr. Wilhelm Reich, who was actually a psychiatrist. Um, after serving in World War II, Dr. Reich, with no family still living, made his way to Vienna, where he became part of the Sigmund Freud's medical community. He graduated with a medical degree and was among the top students. And Reich and Freud were determined, on a scientific level, to be able to capture something called, they called it, orgone energy. It had to do with the organics of because Rice grew up on a farm, but also both of them were involved heavily in you know, sexuality. Um, and they had realized that physically, uh, when a person has an orgasm, it's an actual physical energy that's created, that's, that materializes. And their determination was to capture that. Mm -hmm. Well, Reich uh, continued long after Freud gave up. And throughout the 1930s, Rice did many, many experiments, finally published in 1939, on a bill that was called an organ accumulator. It accumulates universal energy and traps it. He got over to the States in 1940. By 1945, he was very famous over here, taking his healing box, his organ healing box, to people with various diseases, and a lot of people had remarkable recoveries. Um, that brought the attention of a couple of groups called the AMA and the FDA. <laughs> and so by 1947, they tried to started moving against him. And by 1957, they had him in jail. By 55, he was in jail. And in 1957, he died in our jails. Yeah. And the government did everything they could to destroy the, his discoveries of capturing organ and energy. They destroyed the accumulators. They destroyed all the information. Now I'm going to show you how organ energy works. Most of you have uh, had this experiment, but Kathy, would you be the first to see how my necklace works and why I wear it? Sure. <clears throat> this is why you'll be happy to have your organ gift later. So uh, here's a small muscle balance test. Stand on either leg. Okay. Hold this arm out. No, hold this arm out then. Stand tall, hold your arm strong when you press down. Strong arm, arm, keep the arm up to the ceiling. Okay. And really resist me. Well, resist with the arm. <laughs> Really fight with the arm. Can you hold the arm open? Uh -huh. Do it. I mean, hold it to the ceiling as you come down. Yeah. Do the resist. Don't keep the arm strong. Uh -huh. You can do it. I know you can hold your arm really strong and resist. Can you resist? Uh -huh. Resist your arm? Can you Don't let it go down. Yeah. I, I, it's not holding. No, but I go over. I'm I mean, do do it. Keep it straight. Like point there and don't let it go. If you can't possibly do that. Hmm. You better come up for the test. Uh -huh. I'm not. Also, actually, see what he's doing, and then we'll come back up, okay? Yeah, I mean, I know how to do it, but oh. it's just not doing it. So stand on one leg, hold this, hold this arm out, Keep, hold your arm strong as I press down. So don't, yeah, there we go. There we go. Hold this in your hand, same test, fight with me, hold strong, don't push you farther, don't push you over here. Mm -hmm. Same test without it, then. This is an organ necklace, hold strong. One more time. So you have felt now organ energy. Or this is an actual generator of organ energy. Did you try one more time? Right. We try one more time. I know you can do it. We know you can do I, it, Kathy. You, you can do it. You okay. can do it. Just, just hold the arm oh, super okay. strong. Oh, do you want to try the other arm? Yeah, Let's just try this one. Yeah. Hold the arm super strong. Okay. And raise it up as I press down. And be willing to fall over. There we go. That's good. That's yeah. it. That's it. Okay, then hold on to this. Yeah. Same test now. That's wrong, my dear. I'm going to push you a little harder now. I'm going to push you over here. And if you let go, and one more test without it. That's how they work. That's how they work. 
Now, would you stand up? We're going to do one more test with you. And would everybody get in line? Kathy, would you get beside him, please? Hmm? We're going to do a test involving all of you. Come on over, Kathy. Come on over, Tom. Come on over. I'm going to give you the necklace. You're going to touch. Come on over, Kathy, right here. Come on, Melanie. You touch each other. And we're first we're going to, well, without him here, to okay. we're going to see what your basic, you don't right. have organ on, do you? No. Nope. Hold strong and stand tall. Kathy, <laughs> <laughs> will you touch him on the shoulder now? Okay. Hold strong and stand tall. I'm pushing him harder. Let go of his shoulder, Kathy, if you would. And that last, about that long. <laughs> so that's how powerful the device you guys are giving is. It went through everyone to receive, to reach him. So awesome. you, you've now experienced the, what I think is the most interesting energy source because it's something that yeah. everybody can wear and carry with them all the time. Yeah. I don't know if I already got this. Did you meet us somewhere? It's called. I brought things like this at, um, with different places. And, um, I guess at a, at the, um, there's like a psychic expo or something. I think at the Chattel Center and people are amazing for us. Uh, uh, well, uh, it would be nice to test it. If you have one at home, bring one to our place. And then we'll Kirkland. test and see. Awesome. I would love to see it. Yeah. Okay. So cool. That is a hormone necklace that we've just all experienced. Yes. I have a question. Yeah. I heard that this was stronger than the quantum appendish. Can you explain why? Or is that? Sure? I don't think what it have, it's made from lava, but I heard the organ is actually much more powerful because it has a bigger... I well, this incorporates, what this incorporates yeah. is mm -hmm. something called monoatomic gold, which is gold in its highest state. You've got copper, silver, you've got different gemstones, and then you've got steel BBs for the electromagnetic effect. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, what really makes it work is that there's crushed crystals on the interior. And as the vegetable resin dries around the crystals, it stresses the crystals. Yeah, I guess there's yeah. vibes up as a whatever, I just... I would love to have you. Can you come to our office? Yeah, I just, I, it's so funny because I just, you know, saw yeah. your thing today or yesterday, yeah. whatever, for this, and then I would just order a bunch of stuff. I'm going to come to you with that same I would love thing. to be able yeah, to test and it. And I'm like, I want to test it's them like, and yeah, figure out what they do. And so that's why I like My daughter had the bracelet. She goes down with the flu in like five oh, days. Yeah. I took me two weeks, and I didn't wear the, the wellness bracelet. Like, you know, I was doing all the on her. So. Yeah. Wow. This is brilliant. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. Yeah. We'll give you our address when, when you. Okay. Yeah. Miss Kimmy Primalia, could you delve into sure. the uh, the MF idea? Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, you, see. so this is, uh, I guess, because this is the in my finding. I mean, we've tested so many different products all over the planet. I have found one. But we have to have a main force in the warmest parts of the world because it's the sunlight drying the crystals that stresses them that creates the best of these. We've got all kinds of ones in our house that don't work. Yeah, there's a lot of them that don't work. And that's why with whatever <coughs> products you get, you know, Oregon's been around for quite some time. But the thing is, you always want to do the muscle balance test. Right. And the muscle, the body will always tell you the truth. The body will never lie. And this is why we always validate our products with the muscle balance test. We've tried many other Oregon products out there, and they don't pass. John and I went to a store, an East West bookstore in the town of Seattle here. There was a same principle, a metal... Um, pendant and necklace, same principle, same concept as what the Oregon does, protects against negative EMFs. They were in a glass case, $125 and $500. And John and I said, well, let's muscle balance that. So we did muscle balance this and it failed. We thought, oh my God, that $500, people will say, it just doesn't even pass the muscle balance test. That's creepy, you know? So there's a simple thing you gotta do and your body will always tell you the truth, right? So that's why we always validate our products. And we have these special made through a gentleman friend, and it has, and he does it individually, handmade. It's not factory, no machine. It, each one is hand, handmade, and he's very intuitive, and just Reiki, and he, and he infuses each wow. one through the heart. Mm -hmm. Everything we put together, we have to do from our heart, whether it's that or but people can feel because it's a live entity. Mm -hmm. the, may I? Sure. Well, I've got mine. Well, let me do this one. Sorry, John. This is a bracelet here. I love it because I can take it on and off, has elastic, and you don't have to keep doing the necklaces. You get tired of having things over your neck all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And so I love this bracelet. It just comes off and on. Um, but it's a, the Mother Earth Oregon, this variety of elements combined together is a life force. It's a positive life force. So um, I'm sharing real quick about native EMFs. Cell phones, computers.